In today's episode, we're going to be going through a tier list for rap duels. We have 20 different duels, but obviously we're in a different setting. We're in Detroit, Michigan with the Hive Mind Boys. Thank you so much for joining one us One of today. the best duos on YouTube right now. So. With one of the other best duos on YouTube. Absolutely. Thank you for having Appreciate us. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. So listen, guys, the way that this is going to work today, we're going to go through 20 different duos and again, go through our ranking system from bad all the way up to perfect. You guys obviously know the way we do things here. So guys, let's get this started. Let's start off with Kendrick Lamar and Baby Keem. Where do we place these guys? What's going on? Ooh. What are you guys saying? It's early on for them. That's very true. Absolutely. It's early on, but I'm like, I'm leaning towards perfect. You're leaning perfect? towards perfect off the bat? Okay. I mean, two huge hits on the melodic blue, but then also Baby Keem's contributions to Mr. Morale. Absolutely. It's kind of defined almost a new sound for Kendrick. It kind of it opened up his new lane for hits, for big radio hits. Yeah, like I feel like Keem is bringing out that goofier side of Kendrick, which you may or may not be a fan of, but like the whole Range Brothers flow from Kendrick yeah. has not aged the best with me. Like I can't really go back to that song and vibe too much. That's okay. fair. Um, it is a cheekier side of him. It I is a cheekier side, side, but that's what I think is so interesting about the baby Keem and Kendrick duality is that like you were saying he brings out the quirkiness out of Kendrick but yet like I hear so much you know baby Keem influence in Kendrick's music but likewise for baby Keem where Absolutely. like you hear the vocal inflections you hear the different types of production styles but I'd go amazing I don't feel like they're at that uh, yeah, perfect I'm leaning yet. amazing too yeah I would go between great and amazing I think okay it's still early on, but I do like that Baby Keem kind of uh, shows Kendrick, like is introducing Kendrick to more modern production styles that he has yeah. really taken and just ran with. Yeah, know? absolutely. Okay, so listen, amazing everyone. Amazing. Good with that? Amazing. amazing. Cool. Good. All right, let's keep going on with this. Drake and 21 Savage. So obviously, you know, back in 2022, massive hit with her loss. The community loved it. And people felt like it was a return to form for Drake because before that, there was criticisms with Honestly Nevermind, but they felt like the chemistry between Drake and 21 Savage was at an all-time high for the project. They have other great collaborations in the past, like Sneakin'. Mm -hmm. So where would you guys go with this? I I gotta go somewhere between good and great right now. Okay. Only because I feel like her loss was so predominantly Drake. Okay, yeah, I agree yeah. with you. They, they That's kind of put take. 21 in the corner for that one and just didn't give him that but much But he did a, have his moments on the album, though. Example on songs like Major Distribution Absolutely. or 3M on Glenwood. Mm -hmm. Like, he did have those types of performances. Yeah, you know? totally. And I feel like even before that album, anytime they linked up, it was magic. But then yeah. that just showed a side of them that was like Drake being so dominant. It felt like 21 didn't hang the same way you thought he would. Drake's That's greedy. True. And then 21 also said that Drake wrote some of his verses on there. Right. And you can feel that. I feel you like there's feel certain... Apparently like, they helped each other on, on right. the verses, so it's interesting. But I, I do feel like when it comes to Drake and 21... It's a solid duo because Drake is a much better rapper than 21 when I'm looking at just bars, double entendres, all the technical stuff. But 21 kind of makes Drake take things back and just stick to that trap bag where he doesn't yeah. have to do anything too crazy. Yeah. So I feel like there's a good balance between them. But you, you do have songs like Hours in Silence that are not really that strong. Right. Mr. Right Now off yeah. of Savage Mode that 2. That's cringy right as fuck. But you right. do have mega um, bangers like Sneakin' as well. Yeah, you so do. I mean, totally. I would go great with this one. Yeah, what great, do you guys think? great feels right. Great, great does yeah, feel right. Great yeah. Yeah. You want to agree with that? Okay, yeah. let's keep you get Jimmy Cooks, too. You can't, yeah. That's can't, very can't true. sleep on Jimmy Cooks. Banger. Great Actually, song. there was a conversation in the Discord, in our Discord today, about Jimmy Cooks. And Fagella, you know, he runs our Twitter and he does our social media management. He was like, Jimmy Cooks, like the verse for 21 was absolutely horrible. And like people no. were going at him in the Discord. <laughs> so listen, let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to a bit more of an unserious duo, you know? And this okay. is going to be Lil Pump and Smoke Perp. I mean... They've been active for like, I guess, six plus years now. So you can't really say anything God. about them. But I mean, they do have certain songs together. They do have good chemistry. So where are you guys going with this? Uh, what a strange duo. Yeah. yeah. They define a time. And that's I feel like that's, that's like cool for what they were doing at the time. They definitely have chemistry. It seems like they had a lot of fun making music. I prefer the stuff from the really early days with them. Yeah. I do like the song Nephew, but I feel like they stole the flow from Valet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they fit too. it really well, but... I don't know. It's like mid or good for me. Yeah. I would I go would... around that mid area, to be honest with you. Because another thing, too, is that, like, stylistically, they're not doing anything crazy. I yeah, mean, yeah, a exactly. lot of the flows and sounds that they're introducing don't really do much for me. And even at that, a lot of the stuff always ran on antics back then. And, like, that's how the music was being fueled. So I'm okay with I, I will this say one. this, though. Like, even though they're both pretty horrible rappers, they're each other's <laughs> best, like, counterpart. That's very true. Yeah. Like, yeah. they yeah. actually do true. meet in the middle and um, have some silly bars. And I feel like. We kind of view them more as meme rappers than anything else. For sure. Yeah. So they make for, each other better. For what they're trying way. to do, it's cool. 
But as a duo, I would go mid. To me, it's like the definition of mid. <laughs> like, this is yeah. next to mid in the dictionary <laughs> in rap duos. Facts. Okay, Facts. cool. So Lil Pump and Smoke Burp are going to go into mid, but let's go on to a more serious duo. And this is XXX Tentacion and Ski Mask, Florida natives. <sighs> and off the bat, they had chemistry, and people were super intrigued with their sound because there was this rawness to what they were bringing back then. So, how has their music and collaborations aged with you over time? And where do you guys maybe see them in your rotation? Like, Mm. Where do you guys also see them on the tier list? Uh, I think they're fantastic as a duo because when you see guys come up with in trap metal, whether that was before or after X, mm-hmm. so many of those guys will work with each other mm-hmm. and they bring the same delivery, just exactly, you know, yeah. yelling, screaming. X was obviously more versatile. It's not the only type of music he made, but Ski Mask and X were known for their bangers. But then Ski Mask being a really technical rapper, wordy, lyrical. Kind of offset that. Yeah, yeah I feel like it was a good is a good mix. You didn't see it happening anywhere else. And they were almost like an unlikely duo. Yeah. In a way that I kind of felt like Namir and Corday were at the beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good comparison. You know, just kind of like Namir doing a little fresher, more modern, kind of trendy sound, and Corday mm-hmm. coming in and being lyrical, but they could do stuff together and compliment like compliment one another you know yeah for sure i I mean i think that when it comes to the two of them um songs like freddie versus jason are amazing the back and forth you get between them really shows how great their chemistry was and even though they are known more for their like screamo type of trap metal stuff they did have range in terms of their collabs right i feel like great is fair with the two of them i think great is good what are you guys going with you think great is good i'm leaning great that's a tier but below kendrick and keen just to that's say. good. Yeah, that I think good. I think I think it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I think it's yeah. great plus for me. It's close okay. to up yeah. there because like that was just there's something special about it. The best know? part about them was their chemistry. Like you could just tell that they were willing to push each other outside of their bounds because yeah. of the relationship they had, and that's special. Like that sets them apart from a lot of yeah. Other like they were best friends. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah. So. And take a step Absolutely. back. I've never seen a song like electrify a place right. like mm-hmm. that. You oh, know? for sure. Like, the mosh pits and the videos they used to see go viral were absolutely crazy when they were performing. And I think great is decent for them. I think. That's a good category. But let's keep going on with this, all right? So we're in Detroit, and we wanted to bring in a duo that perfectly encapsulates what Detroit is, and that is Eminem and Royce the Five Nine. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite duos growing up, um, Bad Meets Evil. Bad and meets then, you evil, know, yeah. you know, Hell the Sequel was just monumental for my rotation when I was 11 years old. So mm-hmm. you got songs in there like A Kiss, The Reunion, you know, Welcome to Hell, you know, Fast Lane. Loud Noises is crazy, too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know... Where is there any other place besides perfect for them? That's kind of like what I'm asking myself. I've never heard a mishap with them, to be honest. With I mean, you yeah, I don't think you can really make an argument for them not being perfect. I mean, the way that they'll even finish each other's lines, like you can right. tell there's so much intention when they're actually writing their verses down. Right. And uh, yeah, even their newer stuff, like something like Caterpillar, for example, yeah. even that was fire. Off of the Book of Ryan, even yeah. something like Not a Like off of Kamikaze. That was one of the better songs off of that album. Totally, yeah. Um, but let me ask you guys this: as Detroit natives, like, yeah. how much of an impact that they had, let's say, on hip hop music within the city? And when you guys were coming up, like, were you invested into the duo as, like, as a whole? Like, how does your rotation, let's say, stay with them? I mean, they're just like uncomparable. It's unparalleled okay. in terms of like influence in the city. They stand alone. Like, it's a two-headed Mount Rushmore in a lot of ways. You know, mm-hmm. that's very true. Do you yeah. think there's anyone as dominant as them that have came out, let's say, you know, of Detroit at a, at any certain point? Baby you know? Tron. Uh, sure. <laughs> I'm saying uh, uh, Cash Kwan and TJX6 definitely yeah. for a moment. You know, uh, yeah. Shitty Boys is a, is a trio, so we yeah. got to count them out. Um, right. Yeah, no, I I mean. I think Royce kind of elevates Eminem in a certain way. Like That's true. Royce is wordier, more poetic. Like, you know, Eminem can kind of get in the goofy bag and Royce kind of like... Solidifies that. Yeah, yeah, he just kind of like, he holds him to a certain Grounds standard. It. Like yeah. there's... Yeah, I mean, I wasn't super invested. I grew up like more of a surface level Eminem fan, but I think they're, a, yeah, a perfect duo. They're I also they're from that era where like duos worked in a different way like it is like they are like world builders it is like Mm -hmm. cinematic like they lean into whatever the theme of the song is and write from like a much different perspective yeah and like the storytelling is always on point and they'll always like kind of match the theme of the song yeah exactly what i mean and i feel like when it comes to them it is a perfect duo that's what we're gonna put yeah i think we're all on board for that and uh they're like the only like older school duo that we Mm -hmm. have here we didn't bring in like outcast and mob deep and Mm -hmm. other classic ones um just because the whole list is based on more modern duos and they do have a project in the 2010s decade so for sure it seemed to fit yeah Yeah. Yeah. their best collaboration still is probably bad meets evil off the slim shady lp i think that's probably still my favorite song from them as a whole yeah and i would probably don't they they call themselves bad meets evil too like as absolutely yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right 
So perfect for Eminem and Royce the Five Nine. But let's keep going on with this. We have Lil Baby and Gunna, and they started creating a lot of noise in 2017. Then 2018 came around. Their solo projects were hitting, and as of recently, like they don't collaborate as much anymore. And I mean, I would like to see more collaborations from them, whether yeah. it be let's say a solo album or let's say even just new singles, because you yeah. do have mega bangers from them. Stuff like Never Recover for like with Drake, or let's say even something off of what was the 25k jacket off of Diaz Forever was incredible as well so how prominent are they in let's say your rotation and where do you want to rate them i used to be a huge little baby fan and a huge gunna fan different times in my life yeah, like same. i remember harder than ever little baby mm -hmm. i was i was obsessed with that tape i loved like what was it drip season three mm -hmm. yeah the, the one we were super yeah, into the, the green one yeah. yes absolutely. yeah i was super into that and i kind of felt like there was a moment where little baby just took over Gunna Shine and became the rapper everybody was excited about yeah. while Gunna kind of like lagged behind. And then I felt like it kind of switched where people saw Lil Baby become one of the biggest artists in the world and started to doubt him as a rapper. Mm -hmm. And he had a lot of lackluster verses on different people's songs. And then Gunna kind of started to solidify his vibe. And now I felt like it's kind of, it's equal. And obviously it feels like extracurriculars might be the reason they're not making songs together right now. Yeah, exactly. But like... I don't know. I, they have some great songs. They have some great songs. They have yeah. great material as well. They have a trap classic in 2018 with obviously. I don't know if it's uh, a classic, bro. A trap classic. Drip too hard. I don't. I, 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 drip I, I, harder. I'm, I'm, oh, the, you mean the, the whole project? The actual tape. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't that think that's took, a classic. Well, listen, no. that took over everything when it totally. dropped back then, and like. Wait, drip you, too hard the song or drip harder the drip album? Drip harder the album, man. No. Like absolutely. That's not you a classic so much, now. Bro, Come on now. Bro, for trap classics, I'm not saying like unanimous everything out of the genre. I'm just saying trap music within that time that was easily one of the biggest yeah. moments of that it year and it's moment. solidified. But I don't bro. feel like people talk about the project as much as, as the song. That's true. It's just yeah. Drip Too Hard well. is like one of the most successful rap songs of the last 10 years. But like the tape, not a lot of people talk about it. Yeah, yeah that's very true. I feel true. like as a duo, they're like, they both carried a certain sound together. They each bared like the same weight, yeah. got it to a place. They kind of branched, like they took that success, went their independent independent routes, and now we're left with like, will they ever recreate the magic that Which is kind of sad. Yeah. When they brought yeah. It's kind of sad. I'm it's super always sad to with see yeah. yeah. So, what do you guys want to place? I would go with good on here, I feel like. Oh, yeah. that's a bit low. Really? You, you guys good? would go low? You think it's lower? Than I'll go I'm lower. I'm not sure. You go lower? You go mid with this? I'm smelling mid. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. It can't be, can't be lower than good. <laughs> can't be higher than great. It's like, though, like that's yeah. all I'm considering. All right, you know what? Let, let's meet in the middle. Let's go good with this one. Okay, yeah, okay. that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. But listen, let's go on to another duel that was super underrated because people don't necessarily consider them a duo, but they have a lot of material together. And even, let's say, when Pop Smoke was in a different interviews or Lil Teji mm. was in different interviews, they were saying that their chemistry was best when they were together. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Their favorite collaborators, they have hits together. So where are we going with I this? I feel like, yeah, with the two of them, they have to be ranked pretty high just because of the contrast of both of their sounds. You yeah. have Pop Smoke with the super deep voice and more of the menacing tone. And then you have Lil TJ who is just always carrying those hooks and has mm -hmm. the melodies down on mm -hmm. point. So mm -hmm. I feel like the contrast between the two of them, super unexpected duo, but they just always found a way to make it work. Yeah, I mean, it's song. that similar in a lot of ways but to the x and slump god thing yeah <laughs> ski mask thing yeah it's like it's the regional ties it's that chemistry of like that area and that like era that is just defined by those two different sounds that i think is sweet and i feel like yeah. you can't talk about them without talking about just how much potential there was right. for mm -hmm. more collaboration oh, i think at the time it was like you know, Pop Smoke and Favio or Pop Smoke and Quavo, even like there was all these different moments kind of rising in Pop Smoke's collaboration where it was like, wow, he's kind of like got chemistry with a lot of different people. And TJ yeah. was kind of a sleeper in there. But they're both from New York. They would have made some classics oh, together. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. But I will say this, though. I'm not putting them over Baby and Gunna. I'm going to be quite honest with you. No, I, I think, think that's fair. I think it's the same level. And I mean, mm -hmm. I could even say maybe a bit underneath, but they weren't a mid duo whatsoever. No, no. So I think good is perfect for them. Good, good or great, I think. I would yeah. go good with this one, okay? Yeah. But let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to Juice World and Trippy Red. This is a super <sighs> underrated duo. And yeah. Talk about two different styles completely. You have Juice World that's more of kind of a lyricist to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. where he When he wants down, to be. When he wants to be, yeah. but mm -hmm. especially with Ski, uh, not with Ski Mask, excuse me, with Trippy, it was a lot more of his singing performances that would ring throughout those collaborations. They brought a lot together when it came to the table. So I'm going to ask you guys the same question. Where are we going with this? I mean, to me, this duo is like just two of the coolest voices we've ever heard. Like that's both cool. these guys have such unique voices, such unique deliveries. 
and when they collabed, it was always, always really good. And I feel like Juice World is like the the writer there. And it's not that he he was famously not a writer, but he knew like melody and structure and would kind of make the song and then Trippy would add to it. I feel like Juice World was definitely carrying the weight a little bit, but Trippy was just kind of electrified by a Juice World song. You could tell he was really trying. And I think the right songs came out, like yeah, the absolutely. newest one that came out. Did, did you like Nightcrawler? Because I wasn't, I wasn't a big fan no, of it. No, no. And yeah. I feel like that's what I mean. It's like, I don't think that song should have come out. It's kind of like they would have made more great music together as oh, well. Oh, they would have for sure. And even at that, like Trippy Red's in pretty good form. And like seeing the fan base that he's garnered, like they also shared a similar type of community and listenership where yeah. like mm-hmm. it was a moment in time every single time they dropped. But let's go back to the question. Where are we placing them? What do you guys got here? Mm. I feel great. You feel great with this? I, I feel good just because like, if we well, look yeah. at like the resume they have in terms yeah. of the actual tracks, you'll find quite a few misses, especially when it comes to like the posthumous work that was released mm-hmm. after Juice World's passing. But they did have crazy chemistry. So Yeah, I go good with it. I think they I have some it. they have some great yeah. songs together, but yeah. Not All right. Great. Everyone agrees on good? Yeah, set me, but I am um, outnumbered. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to probably the most legendary duo of all time, and that is Kanye West and Jay-Z. Um, they were making phenomenal music together since the early 2000s. Obviously, Kanye's influence on the blueprint, you know, even catapulted Jay-Z's career into a whole different direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could say that, you know, Kanye also has other collaborators that we could talk about. Example, like, let's say, Common or Pusha T or even a Kid Cudi. But I feel like when you have to come down to it, it is Kanye West and Jay-Z. And they have arguably the best collaboration album of all Ever. time. So I would go perfect. This is an easy this perfect. For I me. think this yeah. is an easy yeah. perfect for this. Yeah, totally. The songs before it, the songs after it. For sure. I mean, even uh, Jail. Like, Jail was like, good. Jail's unbelievable. Jail, uh, it's good, but it's not that great. Like oh, honestly, I expected a great. bit more out of it. It, you know? it grew on me as time went on. The first time I heard it, it definitely was like uh, at one of the listening events. The first time I heard it, I was like, whoa. This is like an anthem. Yeah. Then it grew off of me a little bit. And then the more I spent time with the actual Jay-Z verse and yeah, like it's crazy. the entendres in it, like dug into that verse, I was like, nah, there's like yeah. something just so classic I about f- this. I feel like in his older age, Jay-Z has maybe gotten better as a writer. Right. But I feel yeah. like in terms of like delivery and vocal performances, he's kind of like leaning back a bit. And yeah. A bit not, more meditative. I would, say, more meditative. I would say a bit more meditative. Um, I feel like there's a bit less rhythm in some of his performances, oh, to me, one? I can agree. Something like Jail, for example. I feel like it feels like more he's more talking to you. I feel than like you're rapping his verse. The ego's removed, and the writing is more on display. Yeah, that's you know, true. It's and less like that. energy yeah. and about him, and yeah. it's more like watch my pen, mm-hmm. and then Absolutely. I'm just here. And you know what showed that to me is like the new Nas projects being so good. Yeah, it's like Nas oh, yeah, is in like good. rare form, like really delivering it. Like you feel the fire there, and Jay Z, it feels like I'm gonna pop out every once in a while. I'm gonna show you a verse that is like. If you write it down on paper and break down the mm-hmm. entendres, like, wow, what a fantastic yeah. verse. But yeah. Nas albums are like, like he's doing stuff that rivals his old work. Like, yeah. He's crazy. He's hit a second prime right now. It's yeah. Pretty yeah. He's got a second win for so. his career. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jay-Z has a billion dollars. Yeah, it's <laughs> hard to like bring the fire into the studio when you're sitting on a billion bucks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So listen, Kanye West and Jay-Z perfect. He's I don't think we're going anywhere absolutely. else with this. That's the first perfect of today, right? No, no, no. Second. We gave Eminem second. and Rose right, 5-9 right, perfect. Right. So listen, I'm liking the way that this tier list is going. Very consistent, but... Let's go on to a duo that I think we're going to have all conflicting opinions on. And that is <laughs> Travis Scott and Kid Cudi. Okay, because I don't think it's as clear cut as saying, oh, they're incredible. You know, like they they complement each other super well. And I love the chemistry they have. And stylistically, Travis is obviously super influenced by Kid Cudi's music and the mm-hmm. Man of the Moon series. But the Scots was a bit underwhelming. I'm not oh, going to yeah. lie to you. You oh, know, yeah. like, I feel like they could have done more, especially after hearing a record like through the late night and it's not to say it's a bad record i i do enjoy the record it's just that with the list that we have here today you know and the way that we're ranking them you do have to take that into consideration mm. so do you guys still spin the sconce as much no no i'm not i'm not really listening but i think it's i don't know we did a travis scott tier list and or bracket rather and i grew an appreciation for that song and felt like it was expectations versus reality it really yeah. is oh, just that's like a good way to put it like i it's not that that song is amazing, but I think that if it had come out as a surprise and like there was nothing around, no like nobody knew anything about them coming out with a collab song, it just people would have really liked it. Yeah. And then I really like Baptized in Fire. Like yeah. I think that song is so good. That's probably their best collaboration. It's and up there. It's up there, and I, you know, it's not. 
it's not always that a new artist who's very influenced by an old artist will collab with that artist and make something that is actually really good, like really yeah. quality. And I feel like that's a pretty good example of it. Like, no. Yeah, I, I just feel like the whole demographic that fucks with the two of them as a duo, um, they were really pushing for that collab album, The Scots, and that single, which could have been the lead single to that album, it just kind of felt a bit forced. Like, I, I like when they collaborate and it feels supernatural and something right. like Stop Trying to Be God, where you have Kid Cudi just doing the hums, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. that just felt like it was needed and it was intentional for that track. But when the two of them collide, I always, sometimes I feel like, it's not always meant to be. Yeah. Well, like you said, it's like if someone's really influenced by someone, and it's like the older and younger, like stop trying to be God is so nice because it's almost like a blessing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You have like this older influence who's just like here to kind of do his signature thing and then yeah. it's still Travis's song. And when they try and meet halfway, I feel like that's when you get a little disappointment. Yeah. Or yeah. even through the late night, I had a little bit of an issue with just the fact that he's interpolating. Like he's, you know, Travis is just taking the old Kid Cudi melody and mm -hmm. just doing it with that's Kid Cudi. And it's a banger that's as a, a song. Banger, but though. just like, you know, theoretically, the way I think about it, I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know? I like that. So I think I would go great with this one. I'm I would go sure. good on this no, one, to be honest. Good. Come on, right to me. I, I go great too. I would. I, go I would go great. Good. Are you kidding Shit. me? They have bangers together. Sure. They have moments in time. <sighs> but it's just they good. Have bangers, I but I mean, we, we just talked about stop trying to be God. A top yeah. four, top five, Travis Scott. Uh, how no, could you like, say no. that? No, this is great. I'm sorry. <sighs> Yeah, like uh, you're, you're saying it's the green. same as Lil Baby and Gunna. It's the same as Pop Smoking Lil. That's no, yeah, that's Gunna. true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you guys convinced us. I think. Yeah, all, all right. right. We're, we're gonna go agree level. with this. Yeah, yeah great. great. Travis Scott and Kid Cudi are going into the great category. But let's keep going on with this. ASAP Rocky and Todd the Creator. So oh. there was massive rumors of Wang Sap, you know, coming together as a, this collaboration album, but. Tyler then confirmed that it was actually never happening, and then they were supposed to be working together. ASAP Rocky was supposed to be on Call Me If You Get Lost. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen, but man, listen, we have Huda Boy, we have Potato Salad, they have a track record together, and honestly, when they link up, it's amazing, bro. Like, yeah. There is li Stylistically, there's something mm -hmm. so fucking sick about their music. I would go amazing with this one. Yeah, how many songs do we have? Is it really? Is it just those? We, we have, have Huda Boy. Yeah, I think it's just Huda, Huda Boy, Boy and Potato, potato salad. salad. And we also had another one that was on YouTube. That Freestyle it's... Four. It was uh, it was when they reinterpreted the the right. the, 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 the Kanye production, and then after that they had the video in the studio. But yeah. I feel like what's so cool about this one as well is that it's kind of like a mystical duo. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like mm -hmm. everyone knows like stylistically the they're together. There. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's just, it's a myth. It's a legend. So yeah. I feel like that even adds more to the tracks that they've dropped. So where do you guys got this? In theory, it's perfect, but there's not the catalog there to exactly. do it yet. So it it's up. like that potential energy that they haven't ruined the reputation yet. They haven't done something and flopped, but what they have done is amazing. They're like the two most stylish guys ever, both in like, you know, figuratively and literally. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would, so, I, I want to lean to amazing just because yeah. the music we have heard has been so fucking great. And they always match each other's energy. They, they're also on like the same like playing field when it comes to how lyrical they want to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I would go amazing, personally. You can only judge on what's there, and what's there is amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, like you guys were saying, the fact that they don't have a full cl like catalog fleshed out together does kind of knock a point off, you know, just yeah. because mm -hmm. for the sake of the tier list. So let's go amazing with ASAP Rocky and Tyler, but let's go on to Playboy Cardi and Lil Uzi because this is another duo that I feel like has a mystical aura around them where you got songs like Shooter, you got songs like Woke Up Like This where people are absolutely locked into those songs, especially when they're playing live in you know live events and concerts. And I've been able to see these songs perform live. I've been with this duo for a long time and they have never dropped anything remotely, you know, next to even great, bro. Like everything is fucking fantastic. So mm -hmm. I think I put them on the same level as Rock. I mean, what do, we, what, do we, what do we have to look at? We have Woke Up Like This, we have Lookin', we have Shooter, mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that might be it. No, there's one more. Uh, that, of that, course that, we that, that was flowers. YouTube only. Of course, we got of Flowers, course we another got one. Flowers. Yeah, uh -huh. that's another one. And then I think the rest are leaks or usually right. a lot drops. of leaks. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because there's one that we did on the Cardi bracket that I'm just blanking on. That is one of the leaks with Uzi. Uh, throw it up. Just throw it up. Throw it up. I think was it throw it up? It could. It yeah, could be. Throw it up. It could be throw. It might be throw it up. 
Okay, mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. So how do you guys feel about the duo as a whole, especially that they've never dropped 1629, people are looking for yeah. it and people are still hungry for it. They're arguably at the peaks of their careers at the moment too and stylistically they mesh with each other so well. I Where think are we going the, with this? I think like Tyler and Cre- or Tyler and ASAP feel like a great comparison. It feels like an easy amazing but like could be perfect in 2 years. Oh, that's very yeah. good. That's interesting. Um, Where are you going? Well, I feel I, like I, you I have think, some doubts. I think no, I think I'm feeling amazing on this just because you can throw Cardi's, let's say, Rage Beats at Uzi, and he can totally hop on those. Same thing um, on the other on the other side of things. I feel like any production you throw them, if it's more of the arcade, synth, trap, banger, they can fit on that. Like any type of production from either side will always match. So, yeah, I my take on this is just I feel like it's hard to pin down both of them because I feel like they both evolve a lot, mm-hmm. and there's That's been moments true. like where it's kind of like a DNA strain, like it's like. There's been moments where I feel like their styles are too far away mm. that they couldn't do a collab right now. That's then, a double helix. A double helix, yeah. nice. And then, you know, there are times where I'm like, oh, this is a perfect moment, you know? Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Like, it feels almost like Cardi's sound and Cardi's style right now is kind of impenetrable. It feels like it's, you can't just fit into a Cardi song. It's okay. like he's got something going on with the way he's trying to plan something out where it feels like Uzi couldn't just fit into a collab project with, Interesting. with Cardi right now. Uh, that being said, I don't know. I feel more like it's a great because I don't, I don't know. I don't think everything there is as quite as good as the stuff we talked about with Rocky and Tyler. That's true. I yeah, I actually, Riley, I see what you're saying because even at that, like, I do feel like Kuda Boy and Potato Salad are a bit higher, but it's like Chuda is you, amazing. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I'm amazing. saying. That's is true. that like, Chuda's perfect and everything else is amazing. Yeah. Well, we'll couple like this is also like fucking that's perfect really to me. Close, yeah. yeah. All right, amazing. No, you're right. Yeah, amazing. Okay, let's go amazing with this. Interesting. Very interesting conversation. But (laughs) let's go into another duo that makes only hits, certified classics, and that is Future and Young Thug. And (sighs) often in the Atlanta scene, you know, both of them have had different duos. Both of them have had different career paths. But when it comes down to it, it's always Future and Young Thug for me. So, of course, you have Super Slimy. You have massive hits over the years. What's your favorite Young Thug and Future collab for you guys? What do you guys got? Ooh. Favorite song over the years? Favorite Young Thug and Future song. I got to mm. think here. Anything off the bat. Mm. So many classics. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think off of like... You have Super Slimy, which was a great project from the two of them. You had stuff like... Uh, all the cap, I think, was uh, was was on there, right? No cap, no, no cap. That's, it. No cap. Say, that's my favorite. That's yeah. my favorite. Collab no right cap, here. and then what's the one? It's a uh, uh, oh man, I'm blanking on it. Super hard. Is that song called like is it five hundred dollars? What is the song called? It has like it's on super slimy. I can check. Ah right oh, man, yeah. I'm just blanking on it. Hold on, I'll pull up the track list right now for you. Super slimy future. Two hundred. Two hundred. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, that okay. song is really mm. good. What other songs do they have? I'm trying. I'm blanking. I just wasn't thinking about well, it. Well, I could. I look. I could run you through this whole track list. We have no cap. We have three. All the smoke is fire. Uh, cruise ship. Two hundred. Patek water. Feed me dope. Uh, drip. <laughs> oh, shit. Drip on me. Real love. For the gang is incredible. Uh, killed before. Mink flow. Group home. Like there's some serious bangers. They have Harlem those Shake two. together as well. Off of yeah. uh, off life. Okay. That's another serious one. I'm not going to lie, though. I'd probably go great with them, though. I would Yeah, go why great. would you go great with them? I feel it, like... It's, it's an interesting pairing, just because I feel like when you look at the two of them, they are the godfathers of the modern trap sound. Like, almost any rapper you can hear in the trap lane right now has been super influenced by either Thug or Future. Right. Yeah. If it's the auto-tune that Future brought in, or if it's just the inflections and super dynamic performances from Thugger. Um, and to see the two of them link up every time, it's always magical to me. What are your doubts, though? I mean, like, when I have to look at, like, the Cardi and Uzi and, like, Rocky and Tyler, I feel like the material that has come out has been a bit stronger. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the only thing that I want to give them points for is actually having the collaboration on yeah, exactly. together. And it's actually, like quantity yeah, versus quality. Absolutely. Yeah, you but know? you still do have that quality there. So maybe amazing. I don't know. I, I'll leave this one up to you guys. I could either go great or amazing. I'm what leaning more think? amazing. What about you guys? I'm leaning great on That's it. That's what I'm Because okay. I'm thinking, like, okay, future... And Young Thug, individually, two of my favorite rappers, two of my favorite, like, artists of the last 10 years. But I kind of, like, when they come together, I still, all of my favorite Young Thug songs are Young Thug or Young Thug and someone else. 
same with Future. Yeah. Future alone or Future someone with somebody else. Like Young Thug and Future haven't made songs to me that are the best in their catalog. Yeah, oh, that's no. interesting. If it was Future and Drake, would, would they have ranked higher, you think? We're both we're both haters of What a Time to Be Alive. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I don't really, I I I don't love that project. I don't know. Interesting. I, that's like, an interesting. Wow. There are songs <laughs> that I love on it, but like overall, I don't I don't know. I don't see it as like better than anything from what Drake was Drake or Future were doing at that time. Diamonds Dancing, so many classics on that tape. Digital wow. Dash as well. There's a lot of good stuff on there, but Listen, I, think I like scholarships. I, scholarships. Scholarships yeah. is fire. <laughs> yeah. that, that Kentucky. Okay, so we went great on that? Yeah, we went great. Okay. I think we're going to go great with that. But let's go on to another duel that's mm. kind of like a trio, just because you have GID and Earth Gang. And yeah. we wanted to include this because they're not technically a duel, but they have so much stuff together. And they've it's been like two you? acts being paired together. Absolutely. Yeah. And even going back to like some of Jid's earliest work on, let's say, something like Para 2, you do have those collaborations still there as prominent. And they have yet to miss on a song. Like this is, I I could argue that this is between amazing or perfect. I'm being honest with you. Mm, I wow. think it's. I up mean, there. stylistically, the pairing is like as good as it gets. Absolutely. So like, if this is your thing, these I mean, they complement each other perfectly. Yeah, yeah they, they definitely do. I mean, you have songs like the Vision off of the Never Story, mm -hmm. which is amazing. You also have Can't Punk Me, which you had amazing verses from the three of them once again. Um, I think I would want to go amazing on this just because. You, you kind of hear the Southern sound from all three of them all throughout all of their tracks. And it all kind of, it almost feels like you're listening to one rapper for how in sync they all yeah. are a lot of the times. They have perfect chemistry they together. Do. I do feel like looking at this list, they probably have the best chemistry out of anyone else here. Guys, I'm take a shot you. every time we say chemistry in this video. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been a lot already. <laughs> so, I'm leaning great. You're leaning great on yeah, this? I'm leaning okay. great. Okay. Interesting. But it's just because like, I'm just biased like on my own musical taste. Like this isn't, my niche and yeah. I like JID's music alone better mm. and I like some Earth Gang stuff. So okay. when they come together I I can recognize it's a great pair, but it doesn't like ever blow me out of the water, you know? Okay, mm. that's interesting. What are you saying, Riley? What do you got though? Yeah, I'm similar. I, I really like JID. I never got super into Earth Gang. I recognize that they're great, but just never got into them the same way I'm into JID. So I like when they collaborate in JID's music, but Nothing has stuck with me that much. Like, just based on my own thing. Have you guys yeah. heard the song Meditate? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Even okay. like, uh, even the, well, what else did they do together? They did um, some stuff off the Spillage, uh, not the Spillage album. Was it the Spillage album? Yeah, the yeah, Spillage album. Yeah, 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 yeah but that was in 2021, though. The song with Baptize. You guys are familiar with the song mm -hmm. Baptize? Mm -hmm. I don't think I am. Oh, I'm going to show you after this recording. Okay, yeah. You're going to absolutely love it. So, I mean, listen, I would go amazing. Lou, what are you saying? I think great is fair. You go great with I, this? I think great's oh, good. Okay, so underneath They're the more on the side of great anyway, so. so. That's true. Okay, interesting. Majority rules. I guess I, I'm the Lone Ranger on this one, but let's keep yeah. going on with this. Let's go on to Unkin Few, Quavo, and Takeoff. And this oh. was a sick duo just because you, you had gotten the album and. We actually didn't like it all that much at first, mm -hmm. but it actually ended up, you know, growing on us. And I feel like, especially when you were listening to the culture stuff, Offset was more of the act that had that, you know, solo shine, especially on certain verses. But like the quick and aggressive flows that Takeoff would bring to the table were perfectly complemented with Quavo's smooth and yeah. slick style and the hook writing. So again, incredible chemistry. Take a shot, to remember. But I mean, what are we going with? Here? <laughs> Listen, with? I think the first thing to address <laughs> is that. When you, we think of Quavo and Takeoff, we'll always view them as the Migos primarily. Right. I feel like the three of them and what they were able to accomplish, there are different roles within the group as well. When you had Quavo being looked at more for the hooks, let's say you had Offset more for the energy and the quick pace flows. You had Takeoff for that like final verse at the end of yeah. every song where he just shreds it. Like they just worked so t so well together as a trio. As a duo, though, I'm not huge. On only built for Cuban links as an album. Yeah, I feel like there are quite a few misses on there, so that does weigh them down. But I still think they're a great duo. Yeah, yeah, I, I lean great too. I you think great, great is a good yeah. score. Yeah, for I, I think like one way that I look at it is like Offset as a solo artist, I liked more than Quavo and Takeoff as solo mm -hmm. artists, and I also liked Offset collaborating with other artists more than say you know Huncho Jack. I prefer like you know Without Warning. You get yeah. like Offset all over that, and that's like. 
a crazy like he was able to do something on his own it felt like Quavo and Takeoff were always better together Mm -hmm. so whether in the context of Migos or doing Unc and Few I'd still feel like generally they elevate each other which is great to see absolutely so let's go with great on this one but let's go on to another duo that have made timeless classics Mm -hmm. together and that is Lil Wayne and Nicki Minaj and we could have honestly done Drake and Lil Wayne yeah I was hoping this we we, we could have done you know Nicki and Drake as well they have songs together but Wayne and Nicki have a quite impressive track record. So let's take it back to that blog era when YMCMB was really fucking ripping it. Like they were yeah. going crazy. How did you feel about Wayne and Nicki's presence on the track when they were coming together and how they were able to mesh together? I feel like we get a lot of like the rock star energy we end up seeing from rappers like in the years following from characters like Lil Wayne and Nicki Minaj. Mm-hmm. But they're also going to fall victim just to the ab- amount of collaborations they did. Absolutely. That's very and true. Like, they were both very willing to take a bunch of risks and were always, like, wanting to be so on trend that, like, there's some misses in there for sure. There oh, are misses, <laughs> The yeah, era they found doubt. themselves in, like, like when they found each other, it's just that era, there's high highs and low lows. Yeah. And the lows are, like, really low. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's some rock songs in there where they're both in auto-tune and it's, like, it's not. It's it, not even yeah. audible yeah. to a yeah. certain yeah. extent. It's yeah. really not but great. I, all the time. I lean great based on like if you remove them from the history of rap, like we're in such a different place. We are. That's true. We are. That but at the same time, true. I feel like their best collaboration songs come on songs where Drake is also present. <laughs> yeah. Right. When you have songs like Only, for example, yeah. you have Seen, songs like Seen Seen Green. Green. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also have songs like No Frauds as well. Like they they do have a decent track record together. I do like the fact though that like when Nicki is on a song with Wayne. That'll bring out, like, her most braggadocious side. Mm-hmm. Well, she'll actually, like, spit bars about wanting to be the best rapper in the game. You'll, yeah. just, you'll have this competitive energy from her that you won't always see. Yeah. So I do like that he brings that out of her. But, yeah, there's a lot of misses, guys. Mm-hmm. Wheezy is my sensei. Yeah, maybe I go good. <laughs> maybe I go good. I, 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 would, I would probably go good. I'm not going to lie. I would go good as well. But, I mean, I feel kind of bad doing this. Like, putting them, like, let's say... I, because they're both such legendary artists. Yeah, like that's what's <laughs> tough about it. But I mean, listen, the track record does speak for itself. Yeah. If you do go through it, there are low misses. So Wayne and Nikki going a good, but let's keep going on yeah. with this. Lil Durk and King Vaughn. So listen, this was a duo that was extremely high regarded, especially yeah. within the Chicago scene. Um, do they have a collaboration like album together? They don't, they don't have a collab. I don't album think together, they ever no. dropped a collaboration tape together. And there were rumors of that at a certain point that they mm-hmm. were going to come out and put full flesh concepts through. Um, you had Dirk that was a bit more of his aggressive vibe and that really came through with a different type of content matter while king von was this crazy storyteller that he was able to bring you into these dark imaginative worlds while still being able to make you feel like you were a part of the song and make you be able to relate to the content matter to a certain yeah, extent i just so. feel like their music was always sort of predictable from song to song that's I interesting agree. um they have maybe a total of six or seven tracks together and mm-hmm. obviously when they were linking it was always drill music and to me the writing and the subject matter just got stale at a certain point when yeah. I would hear them together. Like, you know, it's them spinning the block or drilling or doing whatever it is. And it just never always sounded refreshing to me. Yeah. When yeah. they would link up. I think that's yeah. totally fair. I think Lil Dirk is a great compliment, like to other artists. Mm-hmm. Like when he features, he adds like a certain flavor to it. And when it was with King Von, I liked what they did, but it just didn't Resonate. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's just more so like, yeah, it's like we, it was the same type of song most of the time. And mm-hmm. and they're both great artists on their own, you know? Yeah. 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 Feels, that is very true. It feels good to me. It does feel good. I think we could go with the good category for yeah. Dirk and Vaughn. But let's keep going on with this. And we have a very underrated mm. duo. Probably one of my favorites off this list. And this is Wiz Khalifa and Currency, the kings of the mixtape era. And yeah. if you guys have not heard of How Fly, please do yourselves a favor and go spend that on that piff right now. But I mean, what's so cool about them is that if you're a smoker, this is your type of music. <laughs> like, this is, you can't get anything better than this. <laughs> yeah, like, this so, is, like, the best, like, stoner music over jazzy beats. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, a, it's a combination that is just perfect. It sounds heavenly. Um, like you said, How Fly is a legendary mixtape. You also have mm-hmm. amazing cuts, like The Count, which is produced by Harry Fraud. Um, yeah, they just have a great ear for beats when they're together in terms of just sample selection. And um, there's just a relaxing vibe when they're on a track together. Every time, you know that they're going to be in sync with each other. But. They both have such, like, individual pockets, too, mm. that, like, only they That's sit in. True. And when they yeah. come together, it is, like, 
also Wiz is like one of the most schizophrenic rappers for me. <laughs> like there are there's versions of Wiz. There's so many versions of Wiz that I hate, and then there's other versions where I'm like, I can't believe how much I like this. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like he has this pop side to him that like I'm never gonna be a fan of, Same. and then he has these like true blue like just weed like the cushion OG yeah, era there's, a, like there's that parts of, of him stuff, that are just yeah. unbelievable and I can't believe they all coexist in the same artist yeah. what's yeah. cool about them too is that like I feel like they've never missed they li- they literally have never made a bad song together whatsoever yeah. they yeah. have an incredible track record the chemistry take a shot is absolutely incredible throughout the entire um, discography of their collaborations together they have a classic mixtape they're low key like they elevate each other to a whole different place when they're together I go amazing. I would go amazing too. I go amazing with this. I I'm gonna sound like such a hater if I even <laughs> say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. No, 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 no. No, I think cur- bad? currency and no currency and Wiz are 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 great together. I just have never been a Wiz fan. It's something oh, about his inflection is just never. It's like too corny to me. And no, I and, and like I think he's a great rapper, but I just like like. Papers like this is like certain ways he says things that I just like I can't take it seriously. Yeah. I don't know what it's it is. The, it's too close to home for you. It's too Midwestern. It, yeah, it is like super <laughs> Midwestern, but it sounds like somebody talking to me. You yeah. know? Okay, and, interesting. But I know he's he's a great rapper and a great artist. I think he's really cool. I just never got into his music like that. I think Currency is a more impressive rapper to me. And when they're together, they do make the vibe of a Wiz song that I do like. So mm. I think they're a, they're a, a good, I would go good, good, but like I'm cool with whatever. Reading? I'm amazing. fine with amazing. I think amazing. amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. go amazing right. with yeah. it. Okay, okay. We'll, go amazing. we'll go amazing with this one, but let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to Ray Schremmer. So oh, Slim Jimmy. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's <laughs> to talk about? <laughs> I'm not two, really? two and three. Right off the bat, yeah. <laughs> That's what we should talk about exactly. before we jump there. Uh, Slim Jimmy um, and, and, you know, and Sway Lee have often been compared as you know that duo that the rapper and the singer you know like mm. someone that brings in that more braggadocious raw violent energy to a track like someone like slim jimmy and then the harmonizer someone that's going to make the ladies fall in love with the track like someone with sway lee a great vocalist <laughs> jordan um, and pippen I, <laughs> just say it <laughs> but this is the thing though as a duo, I feel like they're fantastic. You have mega bangers like No Type, and yeah. you go through all of Shrem Life, that first one. It was incredible. But I feel like Sway Lee Loki kind of upgraded his career once Absolutely. he was able to break out of the duo and started making these diamond tracks. Once he was able to, you know, link up with different artists and have, you know, these songs go crazy to fully show his capabilities. Like, yes, that was a cool moment in 2015, but I don't feel like they've done the best overall you know oh, i feel like they about, could have done better what's the one the uh the one with juicy j oh i know exactly one uh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. is that what's called i think so I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it's up the, the track the sl- for... slime green peanut butter insides that's like the. Hook i'm, I'm not sure if juicy's on that one um is that the i mean this is also the first power glide Okay, power power glide. Glide. Yes, yes. That's power what I'm talking about. See, that yeah. was like a moment it's like they come back and do a hit and i was like oh they're right back but then their projects were weak and then i feel like sway lee took like, other than one, I'm just talking about, like, two and three were weak. And yeah. then Sway Lee obviously went and did, you know, Sunflower and a million different hits, did Unforgettable. It was, like, a different level for Sway Lee. But I feel like there's a certain charm to when they come together that, mm-hmm. like, I'm waiting for them to form yeah. back. I'm waiting for it to happen again with the magic. Cause they like, are inconsistent with their quality control. True. I'm going to be honest yeah. with you. Like... I feel like 2015, as I said, was cool. But besides that, there's not much going on, you know? And Yeah, like, before like, you mentioned Power Glide, I was going to say the last time they really had a hit was, like, Swang. Yeah. From, oh, like, 2017. Yeah. Oh, Swang's fucking banger, bro. Though, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, even now, the recent singles and the lead-up to this album, it just doesn't feel as eventful anymore. Mm-hmm. Really I high highs. Like, yeah. Yeah, high highs overall. But, I mean... I'd go good. Yeah. Whoa. I'd go good. I mean, it's great. <laughs> I I, 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 would, I would go good as well. You're I, saying great. I, also, I think we got to rank them like with a bit of a different perspective because okay. this is like if Earth Gang was just on here. Mm. You know, what I mean, this is a true. Group. This is a true. Yeah, that this is isn't it like is. It is. two rappers with independent careers colliding. Yeah, this is like they came up as a group. Just the output though hasn't been fantastic. You know? Yeah, but like, the, especially the, the last two misses. They you have, also feel like. Uh, sorry, fin- finish your thought. I'm saying they have perfect songs and they have mid songs, okay. and that's what leads me to being mm. like great. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. See, okay. I, yeah, if I was grading it like a teacher, I'd be like, yeah, there's like as many bad songs as there are great songs, but there are so many more great songs than a lot of duos we talked about today. Yeah, the first, the whole first album is great in my opinion. Like, I like sure. every it song is. on Shrem Life, and then there's other, there's Swang and Power Glide. There's a few other little moments in there. 
I don't know. I I would give it. I would give it great. I would give them a great. Okay, I'll budge for you. I'll go great as well with them. I don't. I, I also feel like there is a margin between them in, ter- in terms of talent level for Sway mm-hmm. Lee and Slim Jimmy. Yeah. Um, so that kind of like weighs him down a bit too. Pippen never won an MVP, but you know, yeah, he wouldn't have won all those titles without, <laughs> without him. him. Yeah, hey, yeah take right? it from us: Fair. every duo has a talent gap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys know it. Too. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you guys know what I'm talking right. about. Can we do a Black Thanks. Beatles moment real quick and add the music? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Oh, all right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> have fun with that. Yeah. All right, let's keep going on with this. So, by the way, Ray Schreiber is going to officially be placed in the great category. But <laughs> let's go a bit more underground. And at this point, I don't even know if you could consider West Side Gun and Conway the Machine underground just because Ooh. of Ooh. the beautiful chemistry that yeah. they have built together over the years. And you could have included Benny the Butcher into this conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, you could have included... No, I think it's Tom said kind of Benny the Butcher. But they point. are brothers at the end of the day, so I feel like <laughs> it didn't make sense to kind of link them together as that pair. Um, they also have Griselda Ghost, which is a great mixtape they dropped in 2015 um in 2017 or 18 they dropped wwcd which was a tape with benny the butcher also and i mean for the sheer amount of collaborations that we have we have to look at the quality within them and they're always great i mean i feel like with Conway the machine he really excels at just delivering you these lyrical gems Whereas West Side Gun, it's more about like his personality the and the flair and the skill. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Um, and stylistically, they match so well together because, as Lou was saying, Conway is like that guy that will solidify a verse and mm. make you want to use a dictionary to go back and read <laughs> through it. But someone like West Side Gun adds the flavor to that. He adds like yeah, that extra color. bit of exactly, and it He's makes everything sauce. come through together. And as Lou was mentioning, they have a very impressive track record together. Um, they also have songs together with other people that are always hits um if west side gun were to drop a new album the first feature i'm looking for is Conway yeah. the machine i would go amazing with them bro i'm not Same. even gonna lie mm-hmm. i would go amazing they're with just them. so comfortably in their own lane too like we've had a lot of duos that are you know will lean in and out of pop and then back into their own space and these guys just kind of they are solidified doing their own thing and so it's hard to go anywhere le- less than amazing for me yeah riley what Fair. are you saying Could yeah absolutely that? absolutely i'm still like somewhat new i was late to the griselda thing Same. and so i'm still like absorbing but what's your favorite project so far from them what do you got favorite favorite project? Project? Griselda yeah. as a whole let's say yeah um i'd probably go with conway's from last year it's probably yes. like my yeah. favorite god as don't a make whole. mistakes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 god cool don't make one. mistakes and then like yeah i mean there's been benny projects and I, but i feel like west side gun overall has the most songs that i like as an mm. artist like That's i found cool. him a long time ago but didn't know griselda just okay. from like action bronson was like like always shouting out West Side Gun. And yeah. It's kind yeah, of like, absolutely. okay, so, yeah. I I, I'm going to show you a couple of Griselda albums after that you might want to, you know, put into rotation. Absolutely, yeah, for yeah. Sure. Just to get yeah. into the whole, like, because West Side Gun and Conway are obviously an amazing duo, but I feel like the whole Griselda movement as a whole yeah. transcends a lot further than just them and get into Rome Streets, you could get into Boldy James, you know. Yeah, I love Boldy, it, yeah. like, Boldy James is absolutely incredible. And he's from Detroit, too. Shout out Boldy right. James. Yeah. So mm-hmm. He's doing fantastic stuff. So, officially, West Side Gun and Conway, amazing. Yeah. Can go with that? Let's go with yeah. it. Perfect. That's a W there. But let's go into another one. And I know you guys really like this artist. It's Saba and Smino. So, when they link together, it is absolute magic. And kind of like the West Side Gun and Conway chemistry, you have Saba that's fantastic when it comes to the verses. And even melodic performances. Mm-hmm. Totally. It's very under when it comes to that front but you get that secret sauce with Smino mm. where it's like mm-hmm. oof, yeah you know what am I listening to so what are your favorite collaborations let's say from the duo overall as the years have gone by I mean I just associate their coll- like when I think of them collaborating I only think like early stuff like Smino's grown into his own at least for me like I know Saba has an album recently that like is really highly regarded but for me Smino's kind of like ran away as like my favorite rapper but he's your number one, like number right now one, in the yeah. game. That's awesome. Absolutely. That's awesome. original. And yeah. It's been like that for a while. Yeah. Like he's always said that. Like since we started Hive Mind, he's been it's saying. True. You had told me yeah, uh, yeah. that you were actually following him since like 2015 or yeah. something. No, That's earlier than that. Earlier than that. Yeah. Wow. We like we probably were, 2014. We were yeah. anticipating when Black Swan came out. Like we wow. were like ready. We're, like, really early we to were the game. ready. Like Black Swan's coming out soon. Yeah. We were. What's your favorite song off that album? Off Black Swan. Yeah. You have Amphetamine. You have Black Swan. I love Irish Roses. Yeah. As well is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's one other song on it. I'm gonna look. Glass flows. 
That's uh, another one. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me just Zombies find the. Well, what's through. interesting, just to give you guys some side context, Smino and Saba and No Name were actually forming a group together, mm -hmm. and I would have loved to see that happen. Apparently, they're actually working on new music together, so that yeah. should sound absolutely fantastic. You also have super impressive performances together as a duo on songs like Sacrifices, let's yeah. say, where mm. they come together for Re Revenge of the Dreamer, or even something like Still, um, where Black's on the song as well. So. Honestly, I could go with amazing with this duo. I'm being That's, quite honest with you. And like like Conway and West Side Gun, they're so far in their own lane. Absolutely. Yeah, they are. Like when they drop a song together, it's not going to sound like anything else. That's for sure. And so. you can still expect something new from it. You know it's not going to yeah. sound like the previous, and you know it's not going to be comparable to anything else. And I think that's so special. Yeah. That is special. I'm good with Amazing, too. Yeah, yeah. I. Um, What's the song you wanted to The <laughs> I like Flea Flicka, Spit Shine, and Netflix and Duce. Like, yeah. right Netflix in a row, those Netflix three are, like, crazy. And, yeah, we call him, like, like Rap D'Angelo. That's, like, how we refer yeah. to Smino. Because there's just, like, this vocal style mm -hmm. and like the layer yeah harmony, it's just yeah. something about it. it's atmospheric but it's soulful but it's its own thing so yeah. you know is like different yeah he's, he's my goat so amazing for Saba and Smino, but let's keep. Going. By the way, we have a lot of. This has been a pretty positive. It's been all yeah. positive, yeah. Fire. We haven't okay. been shitting on showing, too many pairs. Yeah. Next one's mid. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think you can want to say that with Joey Badass in capital steez. This no, is no, no, yeah, no, 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 take that back right away. So. I think you have one of the best hip hop songs of all time that yeah. was curated with Joy Badass and Capital C's with something like Survival, Survival Tactics. Tactics. And yeah. Their chemistry was unparalleled because even when Joey was talking about Capital C's, he felt like he was his mentor and like he was someone that introduced them to the art of rapping. And stylistically, they play on such a fine line together, but yet their tones and their unique cadences offer this nice sort of contrast that allows you to dive into the track with such clear minds. So, where do you guys want to put them? Because they've literally never dropped a weak verse when they were together. It's crazy. No, they've never released Illuminati, it. crazy. Survival Tactics, all the stuff on uh, Peep the, the Apocalypse, excuse me. Pro yeah, Pro um, Apocalypse, yeah. 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 Um, what else did you have? Uh, the stuff from American Corruption, yeah. a song like Talking Shit. Um, yeah, I, I just I love the fact that Joey was always super honest about him believing that Capital Seeds was a better rapper than him. Mm -hmm. Like they and that's crazy to think about too. It yeah. is crazy to think yeah. about. Um but yeah, I just feel like they always nudged each other into the right direction to really exert their best performances each and every single time. Yeah. Um even the political consciousness that they yeah, brought exactly, to the table yeah. with their tracks. Like they how were young making, they were too. They were yes. making and super important music at a super young age. Mm, and yeah. I want to go perfect with them. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I do think, too. I Same. think, listen, material they've dropped, perfect. You have some of the best music of all time within their collaborations. Their skills as MCs, you're not getting better than this. You know, looking at what they brought to the table as MCs as far as content matter and what they did for their community and educating people and bringing a whole different perspective on life. This is an important duo for hip hop, yeah. especially for my listeners. Also, like, who did a better job of, like, revitalizing Boom Bap and that right. 90s yeah. sound? Incredible, I mean, especially for young kids. Like, yeah. if you I didn't have say. Joey with 1999 or, you know, the types of stuff that were coming out back then from, like, that whole pro era face who knows where hip-hop would be you know it's i got super it. important i got into hip-hop as a young kid but like these guys were role models for like future hip-hop when this Absolutely. happened i was like oh i can like this genre the rest of my life like i don't always have Absolutely. to dig back like yeah. th there's gonna be something for me as i continue to grow yeah i was telling lou yesterday like that's pro era is kind of what like, solidified me as like a a big fan of hip-hop yeah. like growing up i like you know mainstream i liked eminem i liked kanye i liked mm -hmm. what was on the radio but then like really dove in at pro era and capital C's and Joey were just like, I was on the computer every day looking to see yeah. what I could like, you know, when the, when pro era, when the tape dropped, which is right when Steez had passed away mm -hmm. and like rest in peace. But it was like, the moment was just massive. I couldn't believe, like I, I was like so obsessed with this group yeah. and yeah, they haven't made a song that isn't perfect together. Yeah. Like, so. yep. I would go perfect. Easy perfect. This, perfect. this Easy was probably perfect. the easiest perfect that game yeah. all day. But let's keep going on with this. And this is going to be the last duel for the tier list. It's been a super fun recording. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go on to Earl Sweatshirt and Vince Staples. And mm. this is a fan favorite because yeah. stylistically, they shouldn't mesh together. I'm going to be completely honest with right. you. And like, you get this super 
I would say, mellowed out and subdued and monotone flow from Earl on certain tracks, while Vince brings more of the energy and more of the flavor with his cadence. But as a lyricist, you could say that Earl's a better lyricist than Vince, and that's what complements each other. Like, yeah. Vince brings the style as well as the lyrical substance, but Earl brings in that technical pen, but doesn't necessarily have the vocal inflections or, you know, even that nice taint to his voice that Vince yeah. Staples has. So... Overall, where do you think we should rank They've them? They've always sounded great on the productions they choose. It's always usually like minimalistic beats, down tempo, um, and just really hazy type of sound, I guess. But when it comes to the two of them, we've seen collaborations from them, obviously on Doris, for example. But then you go to something like, let's say, FM off of Vince Staples' album. Um, you have an Earl Sweatshirt verse that lasts like 15 seconds, and there's not really a collaboration there. Well, that was a cool concept, and, though, because like Big Boy was obvious, like you were on Big Boy Playground, yeah. and then it was like, oh, we're going to be previewing some new Earl Sweatshirt. So, like, that's what's cool is that, like, they always kind of make cameos in each other's music, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. super fun, too. They also and, created, like, maybe the best rap song of all time. Yeah, they have yeah. two of my two of my favorite rap songs of all time. Wool is one of them? Wool and, and Hive. Hive, Hive oh, is fire, Hive too. Is, like, Hive maybe, is crazy. Maybe my favorite, at least, like, when I was younger, that was my favorite rap song ever. Like, if somebody asked me like, what's your super song? grimy mm-hmm. yeah. like it just i don't know it was like a, a posse cut but not really it was so dark and grimy vince like at that time i was like there's no better feature to get like vince just does something different with yeah. it yeah know? that's very true yeah i just used a, a line from wool on our channel for yeah. to for lyrics for him to guess from the uh, keep the, keep it hood while crossing over on some ai shit okay and it's just like it? You got yeah, it. he got that it one right. Fire, yeah, fire. but I mean, they're great together. I feel the same thing I said about Cardi and Uzi earlier. It's like their styles have drifted away from mm-hmm. each other, even from back then. Because back then I saw Vince as like a smooth, more energetic, modern take on like a Snoop Dogg thing okay. in a okay. certain way. He had like real West Coast energy, especially on like the early tapes, the Vince tapes. But like nowadays it feels like... I find it hard to imagine like what a project from them would sound like. Yeah. Especially after Ramona Park broke my heart. There was a lot of melodic cuts off of the album, mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that got you more into that West Coast bag, but it was a lot wavier, you know? Yeah, like yeah. Back then, Vince was really rapping, rapping, and he still is, don't get me wrong, especially after his self-titled in 2021, but... I do feel like they need another collaboration together. Yeah. I got it. They were supposed to make an album, Earl, Vince, and The Alchemist, the three of them yeah. together. Yeah. That, that would have been crazy. crazy. But I, I do stupid. agree with you. I feel like, like you said, Vince is more on the wavier West Coast sound, and Earl is more dark hip-hop, abstract hip-hop, and... I don't know how they would collide in 2023. Yeah. What? That's not the question we're asking. That's not the question we're asking. It's not. It's not. That's just a conversation. As a duo, for me, it's perfect. Perfect? Wow, that's hot. That's hot. hot. I don't know if I go perfect Um, with this. I'd go go amazing. I can't go perfect. I can go amazing. I'm fine. I can go great or amazing. I could go amazing with it. Yeah, I think Girl Sweatshirt and Vince Staples should be there. They have a fantastic track record. Stylistically, they mesh so well together. And I mean, we're so hungry for music, so we must be doing something right. But guys... How did you like the tier list? How was it? Oh, that was a blast. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you guys for coming through. Um, Guys, listen, if you are not familiar with Hivemind, I'm sure you are. They're everywhere right now. Please go subscribe to their channel. They are doing fantastic stuff. Episodes on the weekly. You guys have to go into one of their live premieres. It's fucking hilarious. You guys are going to enjoy it. And if you guys want to see more stuff from NFR and Hivemind, drop it down in the comment sections. Let me know what we did right. Let me know what we did wrong. Let me know how you enjoyed this tier list. And thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll catch you in the next one.